Hey everyone, Dr. Baron Grutter here. Uh, I want to make a quick video just showing a tool that I've been using more and more lately in Mesh Mixer uh, to kind of repair models. Now, I need to put out at the very beginning, I need to mention this is something that um, it's, it's always better to just get a new impression. Of course, if you're missing data, um, get a new impression. Uh, but if that's not a possibility, I want to show you some ways you can sort of simulate data and uh, potentially uh, kind of get away with it, if you will. So, for instance, this is a case where um, I'm going to be doing a, 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 an all-on-6 hybrid uh, on this patient, and I've decided that I want to go ahead and have a denture ready. Now, of course, this impression is not great. Um, I really should have uh, taken a little more time to get, well, I, uh, to get a better impression. Um, but to see uh, what can we do with this, can we get a, a vestibule in this anterior area or to kind of simulate something that we can at least adjust in the mouth, um, get us somewhere, you know, get us started. I've already actually removed a stone module. This was a, an algae impression that was digitized. I've already removed a glob here and another one right here. Um, pretty smooth just by selecting, hitting the... Um, F button for erase and fill, and then kind of adjusting the bottom two sliders. I talk about that as another video, so I don't really want to discuss that too much right here. Instead, what I'm going to show you is the the bridge tool, and I've got three different models. I'm going to show you like different things you might repair. So uh, you can watch one of these and then be done with it, or if you want, you can watch all three different sort of uh, situations. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to hit the select tool. Um, and I want to call out someone, Nathan, Dr. Nathan Farley. He's actually the person that brought this tool to my attention. I had uh, never even noticed it was there. Um, and then a while back, he mentioned it in a video of his, and now I use it uh, quite a bit. So anyway, I've selected these two areas, and what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to bridge the gap. I'm going to try to create a piece of material that connects the two of these. Because how else do I, I can't repair and build out this. So you'll see what I mean in just a moment. If I come to edit and bridge, also control B is the shortcut. If I click right there, it creates this bridge. Okay. Now it's not how I want it to be. It's not, it's straight. It's not, you know, really how this um, vestibule would be. And, and you know, it, that's not ideal. But here's the little trick. First, I'm going to hit accept. And this is the trick that um, I actually literally just thought about today as I'm looking at this case. How do I bend that to where I want it to be? So now I'm going to find the middle area and probably the height of contour, which would be this, you know, this root eminence of number eight to the upper right uh, central incisor. And I'm going to hit my select tool. Now it's kind of hard to see because the purple, you can't really see it real well, the selection area. Uh, I'm going to select right in the middle here. Again, it's hard to tell. It's orange on the other side. Okay, doesn't need to be real big, uh, and you'll see why in a moment. Now I'm going to click. Uh, I would go to. Um, I'm going to deform, soft transform. Now I'm just so used to hitting Shift T. Click there. Now if you look, the selection area got slightly bigger. It started out here. I'll hit Escape just to get out of that. And if I hit once again Shift T. See, it's a little bigger. I actually, that's the fall off. So what soft transform does, let's hit, let's uh, cancel that. And let's just hit T for transform. That's very, you know, rigid movement, okay? Control Z, let's instead hit shift T. And what happens is it's more of a, a rounded, subtle stretch to it, okay? What I'm going to do instead is I want the fall off area, which is how far the rounded part goes, I want that to be the entire length of this bridge. So I'm going to hit Shift T, here's the fall off, and I'm going to drag it until it's slightly over extended. Maybe just a little bit less than that. Yeah, no, I liked it a little more. Okay, so now I can grab this and it kind of bends. In fact, Control Z, I'm going to make it even wider try to get that effective area all the way onto the actual model. Okay, so I can stretch this out, and I can stretch it out in any, any directions I want. Um, I'm not going to spend too much time explaining these cursors, but you can kind of see what happens, and I can bend it any which way I want, and I'm just trying to simulate what the vestibule would you seemingly do, how it would bend out. Once I get decent, it doesn't, you know, we're not looking for, perfect, for perfection right here. Um, just, you know, we're trying to develop some sort of vestibule. Hit accept. And now you'll see what I'm going to do here. In fact, control Z. 
Oops. Control Z. I'm going to bend this down a little bit, like it's, you know, the uh, buccal mucosa kind of tipping down. All right. Hit accept. And now, if I come over to the analysis inspector tool, it finds the hole in the base of the model, which we don't want to close, but it also finds the hole right here. Now, important thing to note, the default is flat fill. If I hit this little dot right here, not auto repair at all, just this little dot, it makes it, it will try to make a flat repair. Which, you know, it's better than nothing, but it's not what I want here. Hit Control Z. Instead, Analysis Inspector, change this to Smooth Fill. It's going to try to take into account the uh, transition and the angle. And let's say, click on this dot. And now it creates a nice rounded vestibule. Again, is this a, an accurate depiction of what the real uh, vestibule looks like? No. But is it better than what we had? I would argue yes. If I hit Control A, Control Shift G, which is the same thing as uh, remove face groups. Now I can see this nice gray model. Now when I go to design a denture, I actually have a vestibule. You see there is one little air red spot down here. If you ever see that in your model, it's usually an error, something the software doesn't like. Just go to inspector, it lights that up, click that little sphere, and now it's gone. Anyway, so now I've got a vestibule to work with. I can actually you know, make a denture that goes down there. Again, it's a guess. But it's kind of like taking a stone model and grinding out the vestibule. Um, is it the best solution? No. But it's, uh, again, better than, uh, than having nothing. So I'm going to show you this a couple more times, uh, some smaller examples. Um, this is from a case that I was uh, actually just last weekend. I was in a course, uh, teaching a course on um, digital ortho. And um, I was actually just kind of fiddling around while some people were working up this case, aligning these teeth. And if you want, you th this is a little bit tricky one, I'll be honest, but if you want to, uh, I like to have my aligners uh, go all the way to the most posterior tooth. Some people will just say, oh, if they had this, they just cut off the tray back here. That works. But if you can get it to wrap around the distal of the post most posterior tooth, then you just have that much more retention. So I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to hit the S button for select. I'm going to select this area. I'm going to select this area and then I'm going to hit control B and there's the bridge hit accept now I'm just going to go down to analysis inspector change it to smooth fill control shift or control all that's that highlights the whole model control shift G will remove those colors and now you've got a distal that tooth I think that's actually pretty accurate if you don't like that um, you could, you know, inflate it using the sculpt tools to make it a little bigger, kind of overemphasize it. But I think that's a pretty good depiction. I think that would probably fit on there just fine. And so now we've got a much better model that not only is it going to be able to allow us to fit the tray around there, but when we print, we're not going to have a weird distal surface to this model. Again, it's always best to just capture that data, but I think most of us know that capturing the data on uh, the distal buckle of these second molars can be difficult depending on the coordinate process as the patient opens up if we can really get back there. Again, it's always best to capture it, but if you don't, this is just maybe a trick that you may may help you. And then one more time, I'm going to show you that what really uh, brought this tool, like kind of took it home for me. This is a, an, actually an image of my daughter's uh, upper arch. Uh, she has a medical condition some of you may know about um, and may have you know, seen me post about. She has a condition called uh, type 1 spinal muscular atrophy, and it, uh, it affects her, her, her muscle uh, and her nerves and, and whatnot. And I won't go into all that in this video, but suffice to say, she doesn't really have uh, much oral function, and she's a deep open bite. Her tongue doesn't have any, apply any pressure, so uh, it's keeping her upper arch very constricted. So I was able to image this. Uh, this was you know, the, the best I could do to image her mouth. I was actually pretty impressed that I got this much, but I couldn't get all the way back here. And so we're going to be working on actually making an appliance for her to help hopefully expand this palette, this arch. But, well, I need a model, and this doesn't give me much for a model. So what I did here, and uh, thank you so much to Nathan Farley for showing me this tool, because without this, uh, I would never have been able to accomplish this. Control B. Hit accept.
Control B. Oh. Did it did not like that. I hit escape, I did not hit okay. Control B. Oh, it's because I still had this tool over this area over here selected. Duh. It can't bridge all the way from there to there. Control B. Okay, accept. And actually, I don't like this because it um, left a little spike sticking out of here, which is positive data, and I do not want to underestimate that because anything I made after that would assume that it could fit over that, and that's not really uh, true. So what I'm going to do instead, I could just redo it, the bridge, but I'm going to do this instead. I'm going to use the tool I already showed you, uh, Shift-T. Um, that looks about right. No. Okay, I am going to rebridge this. I think the fact that I fell past this 90 degree turn is what really kind of um, threw the data, threw the, um, the uh, computation off a little bit. So here, and then I'm going to dial this down a little bit so it tries to stay on this side. I would really like to avoid getting that data. Well, let's see. So instead, I'm going to hit, sorry for the delay here. I did this a long time ago on this model. Um, and now control B so it's nice and smooth that's fine so I hit that and now once again I go to uh, analysis inspector smooth fill and click on this one click on this one and now I would say that's probably pretty accurate to the actual uh, her arch. Again, is it perfect? No, it's you know we are just guesstimating data here, but um, using the uh, the neighboring anatomy, I think that's pretty spectacular. Something that you know I, I honestly can't think of what other tools I could use to accomplish that. I've tried before adding different objects in here and merging them together and like skewing them to try to fit the space. It's obnoxious, it takes forever, and it never works out anywhere near as well as this. So anyway, I hope this tool kind of helps out, gives you some little tips, um, what you can do. Uh, again, I, I keep saying it, you know, a new impression, a better impression is always going to be your best bet. But sometimes, you know, you just got to take what you can get. And I'm sure uh, all the lab technicians out there watching this know exactly what I'm talking about. Um, and hopefully this can help uh, make your day go a little more easily. All right. Thanks so much for listening. Uh, make sure you take a look at some of the other videos I've got posted. Uh, and I've got my website where I sort of catalog these videos a little better. Um, various, whether it's ortho videos, uh, Blue Sky Plan ortho, Blue Sky Plan guided surgery, 3D printing and dentistry, all the above. So anyway, uh, it's all free resources. Just want to throw it out there for you. And uh, my, my website is baringrutterdds.com. And uh, all right. Hope to see you guys around. Thank you so much. Bye for now.